one interesting aspect of your relationship is you're in an open relationship. Mm -hmm. What's that like? From a game theoretic simulation perspective, what went into that calculation? And like, how does that- Like how that started or- Yeah, how did that start, sure. Um, the only relationships I've ever done has been open relationships since I was like in high school. Cause I didn't really understand like, why wouldn't you be able to like do other things with other people, but then just like have your main partner basically. So what what is an open relationship, generally speaking? That um, means you have one like main a partner? Not a monogamous relationship. Like you're somehow allowed like in different ways. Um, you can see other people sexually. Sexually, but mm -hmm. like there's one main yeah, uh, or it station. doesn't have to be there for some people, yeah. but like <laughs> okay. I think it's probably easier and we probably don't really have time or the energy for like more than like one person to like really like. Mm -hmm. What about on. like emotional? It's really complicated. There's a lot of complicated stuff going on <laughs> under the hood there. Yeah. Um, I think broadly speaking, you've got like polyamorous relationships and you've got like open relationships where polyamorous is like, oh, I've got like three different girlfriends and we all hang out or sometimes even live together or three boyfriends or whatever. And then you've got like open relationships, which is like, oh, you know, like you can basically hook up with other mm -hmm. people. And then you've got like your main relationship and that's it. I think ours is probably somewhere in the middle, in the middle of that yeah. um, to where like we've got like long-term friends, some of them we hook up with. And that's kind of how we, yeah, it's a delicate dance that... Uh, explodes every six months on itself. <laughs> so it does explode. You guys fight over it. We fight over some things. Yeah, <laughs> it things I happen. Think yeah, I think it's mostly because a lot of people can't handle it, and they they agree to something, and then they realize that we're way too cool, and then they get really obsessed, and they think that they can like get in there, and then it gets really dramatic. Mm -hmm. Have so, you figured it out? Like, um, it seems like a I th I feel dance. like we figure out things more and more. Like when it comes to like what's a good person for us to hang out and what's a not a good person for us to hang out with, or. Like, I probably have more opinions on, like, who he hangs out with because he likes the fucking psychos. <laughs> yeah, so you, you like the surround... <laughs> he likes the not, like, the crazy ones, like the baby trap sort of women. That's yeah. the that's the ones. And so I don't crazier. like that because that affects me. <laughs> <laughs> that affects your game theoretical yeah, relationship. Obviously, yeah. Right. Uh, you like to surround yourself, like, in general, you've talked about with crazy people. I say crazy and I really shouldn't. It's, it's a humorous more, way. It's like, yeah. They're it's very unstable. Very, can be unstable. Yeah. But people that are very unique. Like when I meet this person, that's like. Not boring. Yeah, yeah. not boring. Yeah. And you said that you're progressively becoming not boring yourself. No, I think I'm pretty stable. I don't let them affect me much, but. So you don't think they affect your. No, nah, if I've said that, I've said it jokingly. I think I've like, I've got my stuff like really well figured out. It's what allows me to engage with people like this so easily because I can engage, I can make them feel seen and heard. And then if it gets insane, I can cut off and I can be chill. Like very few things affect me in the long term. Do you guys experience jealousy? Usually like whenever I feel like he's not spending the, like the amount of time that I'm asking for and he spends it on his video games or his stream or like he sees someone else like more than he sees me or something like that, that would like not be good because then it affects like our relationship. Do you have a good sense of like, is it literally time or is it the energy p put into the... It's probably like if like if he's with me that like the attention in the time, like when he hangs out with me. And then there's also probably the time. So if I feel like something else is distracting too much, like it could be work or it could be a friend or it could be anything. Like if I feel like it starts to take away from like me, then I'm having an issue with it. I don't think he really cares much. I guess the only jealousy you experience is probably when you feel like, um, like if I get upset about him seeing someone too much and then I go see someone more. And then he's like, why can't I go see my friend more like as much as you? So like, that's the sort of like thing that we're trying to navigate on, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think we um we we are like diametrically opposed sometimes in terms of how we view like engagement with people or engagement with the world sometimes. So like on her end of the spectrum, like a perfect week for her might be like being in a cabin, watching like fireflies at night, going hiking every morning, yeah. going swimming at the beach, because it's like you're taking in like the grandeur of nature. You're like connected with yourself. You're like very at peace. Everything is like chill and cool. There's the wind, the feeling of nature, everything. That's like her peak living experience. I like being present. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And like my peak experience. experiences are like people trying to destroy my life, like the challenge <laughs> of like navigating a really complicated discussion, um, like, you know, several different dramatic events unfolding that might end my career. Like these things are like very, I like the stress and the action and the entertainment and everything is like very cool for me. So when we're together, she generally wants me to be like more chill. But mm -hmm. if I don't feel like I'm being like stimulated a lot, then it's easy for like my mind to wander. Or, to like, wander somewhere else. Or, or, yeah, yeah, that's kind of the issue. Yeah. We have a very different way of like engaging with the world. So how can you find, 
happiness and the stillness. I feel like if we're just like aware of it and we're trying our best, like whenever we like we're supposed to do this one thing. So let's say that we want to go to New York and I'm like, we should just like go out and do this one specific thing. We try to find something that he enjoys doing. Like uh, now that we're in Texas, we can go shooting or do something fun that he enjoys, then we can do it. Um, and then I think like, just like for me also to be aware um, that like when he spends lots of time on crazy people, it's not because he like loves them or wants to be with them. It's just because he likes being like having, ha having his life destroyed, <laughs> like you said, which I don't really do. It's just a completely different thing. So like for me to like understand more like how he's thinking, because it's so different from mine and for him to understand how I'm thinking about things and like what I prioritize in my life, I think that's like how we navigate. But I think it's good. I think the differences can be good. Like when we're finding a way. Yeah. Well, I think you're, you're relatable. <laughs> more of a you no I'm you're definitely very difficult to get along with like I always tell people that that like if you're dating me for like more than a few years like you get like a, a, an award it's like a that. war zone that you've survived you absolutely <laughs> yeah. you're like a veteran you get medals and stuff and well, it's always like I think there's probably been like six different I don't think she says it anymore but there are like six different times in our relationship where she's like is it always like this is this actually real? <laughs> yeah. and like every you, next you year you lied in like, the beginning of about like you were lying about that well, well, it got more you were, not, you were like no it's just like right now I'm having a yeah. huge argument online about uh, saying the n-word in private and it's just gonna be like this and i'm gonna be streaming 24 hours a day yeah, it's just, there's and i'm a like of... we're like when are you gonna come to bed it's been a week yeah. <laughs> what is this? uh yeah. did playing league come into into this uh, a little bit but i'm oh, clean yeah, i'm clean of league like yeah. six months right now yeah, so. what, what what do you uh hate about legal i never the got humans <laughs> well speaking of which i my participation in league involved on the robot side good because <laughs> That's that's an improvement because <laughs> uh, uh, both with Starcraft two and and uh, League of Legends because OpenAI and DeepMind uh, both participated in creating bots in those. Uh, I was a professional Starcraft two player, so I remember when the AI started to play. It's interesting the types of restrictions that you would have to put on like a gaming robot to make it like functional and not totally unfair to the other side. Yeah, yeah to make it human like. Yeah, was that interesting to you to see AI be able to play those video games? I think in some ways people think things are more complicated than they actually are. And I think video games is one of those things where we're like, oh my God, there's like a million possibilities at every second and who knows. And it's like, no, there's like three or four things going on at any point in time. And I'm willing to bet that like an AI could probably solve some of these games like pretty easily, um, especially if there are no constraints on how they can learn. Yeah.